thank you. Thank you for the very nice introduction. Um, as you may see from the slides, we moved from private enterprise to public uh, government. Um, and uh, yeah, as the slides promise, uh, my name is Thomas Rahimi, and I'm working for SET Federal Office. Um, the next few minutes, I will be talking a little bit about certification, and uh, I'll be talking about product certification. So this talk is a little bit in line about or with the talk which has been held with regards to uh, supply chain. So this is also talking about supply chain to you as MNOs or um, service providers uh, for end users. Uh, those of you um, sitting here in this nice audience who are having the chance of working for any of the German public mobile network operators, you have a specific assignment during my talk. Um, be, uh, and this assignment is basically, please think about what are you doing when you receive updates, new components, whatever comes new into your network, what are you doing then? So, and if you have anything to talk about that, uh, I'll be around in this conference, so you may approach me afterwards. What am I going to talk today about? Um, I divided this talk into three major yeah, headlines. Um, first of all, the most boring part, I will talk about the context in the legal framework. Um, and then it gets a little bit more interesting, or I hope really interesting, because then I'm going to talk about the conformity assessment parts, um, the things which we are really doing during the certification, and finally there will be some outlook. Starting with the legal basis. Our legal basis is, as always, I mean, we, I'm working for a public agency, the law. Um, and said law here is, uh, first of all, the Federal Telecommunications Act, this time not from Switzerland, but from Germany. Um, and according to uh, Article 165, uh, line or par paragraph um, number four of the Federal Te Telecommunications Act, um, operators of networks with enhanced criticality, it is all networks providing public mobile networks, uh, and the, according to the 3GPP 5G standard, uh, they must operate um, equipment only after being certified by a recognized certification body. Sounds com uh, complicated, gets a little bit more practical. Some of you might have had a chance to go through this process already. Those of you who did, congratulations. Um, you made a proper assessment of your own network uh, because you passed the derivation process, so you identified what components you are running in your uh, network, and you mapped them to a list uh, provided uh, in Unity by the Federal uh, Telecommunications Regulator, Bundesnetzagentur, and the Federal Office for Information Security, um, and identified whatever components are deemed critical to maintain your network in operations. The part which I'm omitting here now uh, in order to maintain the time is that there is another list, um, which is um, an appendix to a technical guideline by the Federal Office for Information Security, um, which maps the critical components and the functions they provide to certification schemes which are mostly provided and operated by the Federal Office for Information Security. And in the following, I will introduce you to, into one of these certification schemes which are provided by said Federal Office uh, and which addresses the certification of 3GPP uh, specified equipment. Yeah. And now comes the next part. So when you, uh, once you survived uh, figuring out what equipment you run, uh, you as an MNO, you may be a little bit more relaxed. Now comes the work for those who um, develop such equipment, who um, uh, produce uh, any kind of uh, networking gear, uh, which is um, providing 3GPP specified functions and for which a requirement document has been provided and approved by the Federal Office for Information Security. 
Um, there has been some kind of conformity assessment around, which doesn't grant certificates, um, and has been developed by the GSMA. GSMA, some people may remember, this is the organization which acts as the um, union of interest for um, mobile network operators worldwide. Uh, and this is called, um, this scheme provided by the GSMA is called NESAS, which stands as an acronym for um, Network Equipment uh, Security and Assessment Scheme. Um, security Assessment Scheme. Um, the BSI and its aim to provide a lean solution for vendors um, in that market um, took over set scheme documents and um, created a certification scheme all around it. So if you look at this nice slide, uh, and I don't have a pinpointer with, uh, here, which works on the LED screen here, um, you may see that uh, there is the equipment vendor quite in the middle, but uh, also the certification body as the entity um, supervising the activities included in the certification scheme and the mobile network operator, and this is the reason why I'm giving this talk today, as more or less the recipient of the certification report and the product, and thus also, well, the entity which is supplied with equipment for which a quality assessment has been performed um, under, yeah, a stateful jurisdiction. Um, the important part here is, uh, and this is uh, the difference to GSMA NESAS, if you um, have heard about that, GSMA NESAS um, does not include external review of the results, at least not completely, um, and thus um, yeah, a certification scheme differs by large because it includes this impartial review and the impartial execution of all assessments. What are we actually doing? I promised you to give you an insight. Um, NESA CCSGI is a two-step activity when it comes to conformity assessment. Uh, so there is actually um, an audit of the processes with the equipment vendor. Um, GSMA provided some documents uh, which list requirements uh, and audit guidelines which assess the security um, within the development process for network products. Um, the major aim, and this is uh, something uh, to be stressed at this point, is uh, GSMA is uh, aiming to protect MNOs and their customers uh, regarding uh, with uh, all their interests. So basically, this is not a self-sufficient activity for network product vendors, but it's basically an activity uh, which helps protecting you as the operators of the equipment. By the end of the day, network uh, product developers and vendors must show their capabilities to employ state-of-the-art processes um, and are thus um, audited by impartial auditors, which are contracted by the BSI and supervised uh, by the certification body. Um, for each and every uh, conformity assessment activity, I brought you some examples. In this case, um, with regards to the audits, um, I brought you these two examples, which are a little corresponding to each other. Um, there's the one objective of security by design, which uh, shall be implemented in the processes by the um, network product developer and vendor. Um, and uh, the audit guideline gives some examples on, of what should be uh, looked at during the audit, such as the um, uh, architecture principles of domain separation layering, etc but also security design principles such as least privileges, attack surface minimization, etc. So it's all about that the network product vendor supplies you with products which conform to very basic needs of what you actually require. Um, the same, um, in order to ensure that this is not just a theory which is uh, told to the developers once, there's also some testing to be done by the vendor themselves. Um, and uh, this is under the activity of security testing and basically assures that the objectives mentioned above um, are 
actually applied during the process. Now comes the um, second part, which is the technical conformity um, testing. Uh, NASA CCSGI and GSMA NASAs both use conformity um, assessment uh, documents provided by the 3GPP, 3GPP specification body for everything mobile uh, network communications. Um, and they once um, started setting up kind of a chapter um, which is living as a subgroup to operations, which is um, yeah, uh, concerned with the security of the operations uh, in accordance to their standards. Um, the security test requirements they came up with um, are collected in so-called SCUS documents, which stands for Security Assurance Test. Um, and they have a rather functional view on security, so basically um, they try to minimize on uh, commonly known impacts uh, which occur when implementing the um, implementation agnostic 3GPP specifications and on the other hand um, to ensure that the security which the 3GPP people um, decided to include in their specifications are actually present in the network products. Um, in general, this uh, conformity assessment includes a scanning for um, known and exploited vulnerabilities. Um, and here I give you some references so you can look it up if you like to. 3GPP is a pretty open um, format, so all the documents are freely available if you like to. So there is a scan for um, known and exploited vulnerabilities which are network reachable. And there's also some kind of robustness testing when it comes to um, yeah, fuzzy um, alterations on the protocol level uh, also for network stacks. When it comes to the details of what is actually tested here, um, I, I brought along examples which more or less um, go a little bit deeper into the network specifics of um, mobile networks because they require interaction of different um, 3GPP specified network functions. Um, this serves the purpose or this is to showcase you that uh, the certification is not an activity which is yielding you more or less unit test like results. Um, which can or could be achieved in any CI/CD pipeline, but they are rather results which are um, subject to the interaction between multiple network uh, functions. 3GPP provides a heavy, heavily compartmentalized network approach in this regards. Um, and this interaction is mainly focused on security. So basically what I want to stress is it may be hard to test all of these features in a pre-production environment in, your, in each of your um, parameters. I brought along two examples. Um, and uh, they are maybe a little bit worth thinking about. So the first of these is a test case from the access and mobility function. Um, which um, has to deal with a UE. UE in this context is any device re trying to register. So basically any mobile phone is a UE. Um, and uh, on the other hand, uh, the AUSF is the um, challenging function. So it's basically the function which replies to if you are in network stacking a little bit uh, like the radio server, which is a rough analogy. Um, and in this very test case, uh, the UE is misconfigured in such a way that it fails the synchronization test between the AMF and the UE. Uh, thus, the UE resets its connection uh, every once in a while. And uh, in the following, the um, connection attempt of the UE fails. Since this uh, test case requires quite a bunch of different uh, functions to be uh, collaborating. 
Um, it's an actually quite good example of um, the depth at which the specification provides you testing for the products you employ. Another example is, and this is the second example on the slide here, uh, the interaction between the AMF, um, as already addressed, it's the um, uh, access and mobility function, um, so to say, the function which the UE mainly uh, connects to when it's talking to the core, um, the UDM, uh, so user data management, and the user plane function. User plane function is the part which conveys traffic. So everything you're doing on a mobile network is done via UPF, um, at least if it's a 5G standard network. Um, and here it is about enforcing um, common sets of security rules uh, and that the UPF ad adheres to this common set of security rules uh, provided by the UDM. Um, this is important because you, as an MNO, you may want to impose security restrictions uh, throughout all your no uh, users in the network um, and not configure each uh, UE individually. So, and so you must be sure that the network products you are employing are actually adhering to your configuration of the network. Um, yeah. And this may showcase you that this conformity assessment is actually taking into consideration quite complex scenarios of um, interaction between 3GPP specified functions. Uh, if you are interested in more, um, I recommend reading your favorite um, test case description and the 3GPP. So those uh, regarding 5G, they are all organized under this uh, nice letter code TS33 five and then the following. Yeah. Coming to certification, I guess some of you have at least some rough idea of what cert certification is because I mean I saw 2701 certification is quite common, at least for data centers. Uh, but also I guess that you have at least each of you has a product which uh, underwent a product certification. Um, so what is certification about? Certification is about a third party supervising conformity assessment activities by another third party, as already shown in the graph a couple of slides ago. Um, what is our main task in this um, whole enterprise as a certification body? It's the enforcing of a common set of rules and regulations. Um, we try to ensure that everyone is get treated uh, equally, that nobody's uh, getting any preference on anything. So um, no product should be passing with a security vulnerability for which another product failed. Um, by the end of the day, it's important that, uh, and this is something that we really aim for, um, that our certificates are a little self-explanatory so that um, basically the certificates can be compared in a well way to each other since they all rely on more or less the same feature set, both in terms of the audits and in terms of the security testing. Um, and so it should be well possible to adjust the certificates to your needs as mobile network operators and um, figure out what security requirements are not addressed by the certificates, but are additional to that uh, and needed by you. Um, yeah, Other certification schemes are having harder times at this. So uh, other certification schemes, they do require you as a customer to read certificates more carefully, and we aim not to do that. Huh? Yes. Yeah, and uh, with that, I'm almost done. So that brings me to the Outlook. So those of you who are having the pleasure of running mobile networks um, and having suppliers not building everything themselves, please motivate your vendors. You found my talk great. Get people to talk to me uh, because I think uh, we definitely need the vendors to start uh, certification processes as they might take time. The complexity of the testing shows that um, the setup required is time consuming, uh, and thus it is important to have your vendors um, 
at least start thinking about how to get the certification performed. We at BSI, we are taking part in the standardization of um, efforts, uh, both at GSMA and 3GPP. Maybe you or some of your colleagues encountered um, me or colleagues of mine in any of these um, groups. Um, if you happen to find anything, um, especially from the technical side of view, which you would like to be or would like to have looked at, um, also during the certification process, please approach my colleagues. Uh, they are always open for inputs, so uh, they are actually um, actively looking for inputs. So if you are having anything, uh, please uh, get in touch on that. And um, last but not least, and this is rather regarding the certification output, once you get your first certificate by a vendor to see, and you as an MNO, you must have them. You must. Uh, store them somewhere. Uh, my colleagues uh, doing the MNO audits, they will probably ask for them, uh, at least whether you at least have taken note on them. Please use these certificates. Please use them and read them. And if you need anything, if you need another format, if you need another output, if you need a more technical description, please approach us. We can change it. We can change the format. We can change the description. Uh, but we need input on that. And with that said, um, I'm done with my slides. Thank you for your attention. I'm looking forward for questions. And if you want to reach out, uh, there are two email addresses printed here, the one for me personally and the other one which reaches me as well, but also my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So are there any questions from the audience? Please state your name and affiliation. Uh, Peter Hessler from Zeo Europe. Um, in doing certificate or in doing compliance testing for other types of products, I've ran into a situation where, when there's one user on the network, it'll pass, but when there's a thousand network uh, users on the network, it'll fail. Uh, do you have any sort of load testing uh, because of, of lack of resources, essentially, and it's hidden uh, from the network operator's point of view? Do you have any sort of um, uh, of, of analysis of, of load uh, during your testing and, and where, whether things of, like that would, would fail? Um, yeah, uh, so there are test cases which are related to load testing, but um, so I had to carefully select the test cases I showcased here and load, uh, load testing was obviously not the one I chose. Um, and this is also for the purpose that load testing in telco grade equipment is very, very difficult and can only give a hint at whether the equipment performs auto scaling, uh, but it doesn't indicate whether it meets the uh, criteria for uh, availability by um, commercial public networks. So yes, there is some testing if that answers your question, uh, but this testing can just give a hint on whether the functionality is, corrected imp uh, is correctly implemented, uh, but not whether it's entirely um, functional in the way MNOs m might desire that. So we can't just have enough Kubernetes clusters and enough uh, UEs in order to test on that. Any more questions? Okay. I don't see this from my side. Ah, there's a question. I am taking it. <laughs> Please state your name and your affiliation in front. Hello, Azad from the host server. And uh, I, so if I understood correctly, the tests are going to be built from the vendors themselves. And if so, how, uh, how are the goals of the audits are going to be measured? Um, I think these are two questions. Uh, the, the question on how the tests are built. Um, well, the tests are performed by independent and impartial um, evaluators um, under supervision of the BSI. Um, 
the question on who is providing the test suite or the code to run depends a little bit on a test case. So many of these test cases, they can actually be performed with uh, standard Kali Linux. Um, some of these test cases require specific, say, configuration or specifically parameterized um, network surroundings. Um, that's a little bit harder, and this is part of why I would encourage um, vendors to take a more proactive uh, approach on um, test labs in order that the test labs get an approach on how to perform these tests. First part. Uh, second part, I think that's the audits, right? Um, how they are um, assessed. Well, um, the auditors write an audit report stating how these requirements are actually implemented and what they've seen to prove that these requirements uh, have been implemented by the vendors. Does that answer your question? Further questions from the auditorium? Uh, do we have any questions from the internet? Then we will come to the next talk. Thank you so much, Thomas.